and a little bit overshadowed by Roglic. I remember in Slovenia, he's Roglic is more popular, more famous than than, than Pogacar is, which is sort of bamboozling. Pogacar uh, Roglic is, is on billboards promoting Slovenian banks. Pogacar is not. He's got a sandwich at a supermarket. It's a little bit different. Whereas uh, it, it doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't really make sense. To, are people not really warming to UAE as a squad? Are people sort of, I don't know, are they, are they fed up of Pogaccio? I don't know, but he really does. He, we should not underappreciate how much he brings. Without Pogaccio, I think this sport would just be very sale. We'd be going back to the 2015, sort of 2015 through 18 era of, of cycling, which was a little bit, a, a little bit mundane, a little bit dull, to be honest, where we would sort of have a big team domination. Huon Chris Froome would win. I think Pogaccio brings something different. He's aggressive, ride or die attitude. And we saw it last year's Tour de France. He can be beaten. And it makes him sort of seem a little bit more human. Well, talking about him as an exciting rider, I had the, one of the aspects I think, well, we all kind of agree that he's really exciting about is that he is like, he's not the mold of a Chris Broome. He does do classics. He doesn't just target the Tour de France laser focus, the Lance Armstrong method. So on that theme, looking at his program, Strade Bianchi, Paris Nice, Milan San Remo, Duas de Flandern, Tour of Flanders, Flesh Vallone, Liege Bastogne-Liege, Tour of Slovenia, and Tour de France, who is able to rival this flying form that Tadej Pogacar has this year in the classics and in the Tour de France? If it's just like mano a mano, but I don't think anybody can really take him on, just like a man on him. But during the classics, I'd say, you know, Van der Poel would be the main man that I think could take on Pogacar. Uh, more than likely, I don't really, unless Wout manages to really kind of knock this weird trend that he has of not quite being able to perform in cobbled races. You know, I reckon I only really see Van der Poel being the main man there. In the Ardennes, I don't really see too much competition, to be honest with you. Unless Alaphilippe, of course, was a bit MIA last year, of course, because he had that bad crash in the age. So perhaps Alaphilippe makes a resurrection. He could compete there. And then in the tour, thank you, God. That's about it. That's how I see yeah. it going. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about 2021 um Liège Paston Liège down to a sprint between Pogacar and Philippe won by Pogacar. He's got a better kick than a lot of these sort of puncher guys, more than an Avon Paul, more than a Sasha Vlasov, more than a uh, I think him and Alaphilippe will, will, will be close, but I think he's proven on more occasions that he is a little bit stronger than Alaphilippe in, in, in a kick like that. In terms of the couple classics, I 100% agree. Fonda de Paul, I would say, is probably the bigger the bigger rival. Who knows if we're going to get a full form sort of as grain? I'm a little bit skeptical about that this year. And wow, I I don't know. I I don't think Wout Solo would be able to beat them, but we'll be able to be both Fonda de Paul and um and Pogacar. If Wout had his whole team backing him with Christophe Laporte, Nathan van Hoydonk, and so forth, 100% they could probably uh beat Pogacar. But I think. I think tete-a-tete, it's Pogacar, I found the pool for the for, for on the 